Hey you guys, another long day in court and um, it's been a good day, but long. So I wanted to give you an update, but before I do that, I'd like to mention something that I've uh, kind of been on my heart the last couple days. And that is, is there's a juror, uh, a, a lady, a woman that she was planning on moving today. Uh, she, you know, moving from one house to another, their entire family and the day before she was scheduled to move, um, she got put on jury duty. And I know that's been very hard for her. I know she's, she shed a lot of tears over it. I'm sure it's been very difficult for her and her husband and her children. And I just feel bad about that. And, uh, you know, it's not anything I could do about it. I just wish we would have fought harder to, to, you know, get her off the panel so that she could take care of her family and move. And imagine, imagine the difficulty that she's in right now. I mean, when you move, usually you sell a house and you buy a new one and you have to get out of the house within a certain period of time and in the new one. And it's just a lot of work, a lot of work. And I, I know that it's been difficult. I could see it in her face. I, I know that she's, you know, cried a lot of tears and probably thought it, she, this would not happen to her. And, uh, I just feel for her and, and wish, you know, I would have fought a little harder, uh, get my attorneys to fight, fight a little harder to get her off the panel, but uh, that did not happen. And so anyway, she might not ever see this. Uh, if she does, hopefully she sees it after the trial and that she'll, uh, she'll know that our heart goes out to her. Um, now, uh, give you an update. So the, the truth in our trial is being suppressed in the, in the courtroom. That's just the fact. Uh, lots of meetings uh, at, the, at the judge's bench have been going on. Nothing from the 24th is being allowed in. Nothing from the 26th is being allowed in. And as you know, those were big things. Uh, the 24th, the, you know, the Idaho State Police locked us out of the Capitol building or out of the House Gallery. And that's kind of what started all of this. Uh, they actually broke the law. It does say that the gallery is supposed to be open during se special and let any other legislative session, excuse me. So Idaho State Police broke that, that rule and caused a huge ruckus. And then it spilled over into um, January 25th. Um, where I was arrested. I was trespassed and arrested. And the facts are that there are me emails that are showing that the Gov Governor Little, Scott Bedke, Blake Higley, and others met several times days before the special <laughs> session, and they discussed trespassing a person and then mentioned me by name. And so we have those, but they're not allowing that information in. They won't allow us to talk about what happened on the 24th or what happened on the 26th. You remember on the 26th, I was arrested in the Senate gallery. This is the next day after being arrested in the Lincoln Auditorium. And I was arrested and that case was dismissed because they didn't have proper authority. And uh, so that that basically is what happened. And, um, and they won't let that in. So um, also, if, if you're listening to the court proceedings, you may have caught something, something that one of the Ada County jailers spilled, uh, his, kind of spilled his beans in the courtroom and mentioned that they were planning a mass arrest to mass arrest people at the Capitol building. And this was during the, the session. Yeah, he said it, it kinda, he kind of, uh, again, I, he wasn't supposed to say it because as soon as he said that, the prosecutor said, well, we're not gonna talk about that and moved right on. But I think the jury might've cued in on it that there's way more to this. But imagine that in, in, in Idaho, the most conservative state at the Capitol building during a legislative session where the governor was trying to get immunity for his decisions in locking the people down in, uh, in COVID, during COVID. And now the governor Governor Little, Scott Bedke, Sergeant Blake Higley, Pro Tem uh, uh, Brent Hill, and others are all 
you know, the whole good old boys club where they're all planning when people come to the Capitol building to do mass arrests. Imagine that. And so much that they're ramping up the, um, the police and the jails and all that to do mass arrests. It's just unbelievable to me. Unbelievable, you know, unbelievable. Anyway, uh, and again, just to emphasize, this is in Idaho during the special legislative session. And, uh, and remember what that session was all about. Remember who it was all about? The governor protecting himself legally so, so uh, the state and him couldn't be sued. Now, I also want to just point out this, that Scott Bedke, um, I guess he decides to grace us with his presence tomorrow, um, finally decides that the court is good enough for him to show his presence. But he made the court and everyone in the court wait for him for a day. He says, I got something going on today, so you're just going to have to wait for me. Now, if that was anybody else, the judge would have said that he couldn't testify. Or he would have held him in contort, contempt if he was there was a subpoena. So it's amazing how people are not treated equal here in Idaho. That the good old boys club, whether it's a speaker of the house or a judge you know, scratching the back and, or it's a prosecutor, him giving, you know, basically everything the prosecutor asks, you know, um, I mean, it, that, that's, that's the reality. Everything she asks, he, he gives her, um, you know, it's just kind of a club and the people are basically low lives. They're secondary. Uh, they're kind of the scums, the slaves, the serves. And the, the elites have control. They're in control of the government. They're in control of the courts. And they make sure that they uh, watch after each other. One more piece of evidence of that, and most people don't know, that every witness that I subpoenaed that was a government employee, Judge Manwheeler in this case, quashed their, my subpoenas so they did not have to testify. And that's what's been going on. Anyway, but... Even with all of the, those, all of those challenges, um, you know, with all every single witness, government witness that we wanted to testify, with all that has gone, you know, awry or that has been caused to go awry, um, I'm still positive, very positive. Um, I still believe that the complete truth is on our side. I believe that the law is on our side, and I believe that a person has a right to go to the Capitol building. Um, so, uh, just, uh, just hang in there. Um, I also will say that all, all the government employees, all of that, that have testified, all the, you know, law enforcement, all of them testified that I gave no cause, you know, that I did nothing wrong and that I gave no cause to be removed or trespassed, but, but was arrested because Scott Bedke does not need a reason. Okay. Think about that. Uh, you, not just me, you could go to the Idaho Capitol building to be peaceful, uh, be non-disruptive, and do everything according to the rules, according to the law. And because one person doesn't like you, they can remove you, arrest you, have you arrested, and charge you for 10 months. And if they get a conviction, they can put you in jail for many, many, even over a year of, t of a time. Anyway, I must say that uh, even with all of this, I believe God is going to protect us, that he's gonna give us the advantage as he has in the past, and that we will prevail and be free. And uh, that's where I'm at, and I'm positive that. I just want you to know that I, I know that God will protect us, that we will be free, that we will be uh, something will happen, things will come together, the jury will see the truth, or something will happen where, where we will be free. And uh, I am certain of that. I feel it in my heart and in my mind now. I feel it strongly, and I know that those things have always told me what is right, what is wrong, and what is true. So thank you.